Hello everybody. Let's talk about the ligaments and membranes of the larynx. The larynx has both extrinsic and intrinsic membranes and ligaments. Extrinsic membranes are those that are going to connect the larynx to outside structures, whereas intrinsic membranes are those which connect elements of the larynx to other elements of the larynx. So the first membrane that uh, that we'll discuss as part of this video is the thyrohyoid membrane. So the thyrohyoid membrane attaches the thyroid cartilage to the hyoid bone. This thyrohyoid membrane is an extrinsic membrane of the larynx and it's one of the elements that you should look to as we navigate the, uh, the larynx, at least anteriorly or laterally. You can see that the thyrohyoid membrane is pierced laterally by the superior laryngeal artery and the internal branch of the superior laryngeal nerve. Looking at the intrinsic membrane of the larynx, there are two. Superiorly, we have the quadrangular membranes, and inferiorly, or more distally, we have the conus elasticus. So let's start with the quadrangular membrane. The quadrangular membrane <clears throat> helps to shape the laryngeal vestibule, and it forms the structure of the vestibular ligaments. So here we can see that the uh, the cricoid cartilage has been cut through and reflected away so that we see the, uh, the internal aspect of the larynx and we see very well-defined laryngeal ventricle there and superior to the laryngeal ventricle are the vestibular folds. Those vestibular folds are mucosa that surround the vestibular ligaments. And those vestibular ligaments are the inferior most part of the quadrangular membrane. So we have one on either side. So the quadrangular membrane extends superiorly on either side and around, if you can imagine it coming together. And the airy epiglottic folds run from the arytenoid cartilage up to the epiglottis. So those are the superior most extent of the quadrangular membranes. So the quadrangular membranes are going to run from the airy epiglottic folds superiorly down to the vestibular ligaments inferiorly. So moving distally or inferiorly along the larynx, we come to the conus elasticus. And the conus elasticus um, is known by a variety of names. Um, it's synonymous with the cricovocal membrane or the cricothyroid membrane. And there are three distinct parts to it, um, only two of which we'll see in the, uh, in the laboratory. So the, the first part, and this is the most superior part of the conus elasticus, are the vocal folds. You can see there and there. So the, the vocal ligaments, I'm sorry, um, when invested by mucosa are known as the vocal folds, and those ligaments are the superior most part of the conus elasticus. As we turn to a more anterior view, we can see that the cricothyroid ligament, um, specifically the median cricothyroid ligament, is here. That's sort of nestled between the thyroid cartilage, superiorly the cricoid cartilage, inferiorly, and then we have the cricothyroid muscles on either side. That median cricothyroid ligament is the uh, 
structure through which one would incise for a cricothyrotomy, which is performed in emergent situations in order to maintain an airway. There are also two lateral cricothyroid ligaments that we can't see here that run from the vocal ligaments down to the distal lateral walls of the larynx. The conus elasticus acts as a funnel, and what it does is direct air superiorly towards the rima glottidis, so that when one is in the process of phonation, that air is directed at the vocal folds so that they may vibrate to produce sound. So we've discussed the, uh, the various membranes and their ligaments of the larynx, both extrinsic, such as the thyrohyoid membrane, and intrinsic, such as the quadrangular membranes and conus elasticus. I thank you for your time.